Wait, finally, 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 man. I said we we're going to be live at 11.30, and now it's five minutes past 12. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maria Banga, founder of the association Hope for the Abuse and the Butter. It's been a while I did a live video, and so much has been going on, and uh, I don't know how to qualify 2020 anymore. Um, but we are here, we've been working and we've been doing our best. We recently rounded up Project AAF and uh, we keep working. And you know, one of the things I love doing is working with partner organizations. And uh, I decided to start hosting some founders who may want to have an open conversation with me about their journey, um, about every other thing that is um, on what can I say? On the table right now you know as organizations especially humanitarian organizations of course when things happen you kind of get concerned whether it's in your focus area or it's not in your focus area and then if it's in your focus area you sometimes want to talk with other people you know to have other opinions and uh, to share success stories to kind of hug each other through our challenges and all of that so my very first guest is called Mo Harriet um, she's the founder of the Mother of Health Foundation, which just happens to be her name, right? M-O-H, Mother of Health, right? Yes. Mother of Health Foundation. So um, she was in Douala for a couple of days, and I was very honored to host her. And she's going back today, and I'm like, no, you can't go back without sitting with me and having this conversation. Once again, um, I wanted to do this through StreamYard or through live stream. It didn't go. I wanted to do it on the laptop for some reason. Then electricity went up. And I was okay, we'll just sit like this and have an informal conversation. So Harriet, good morning. Good morning. Ah, uh, talk the way Mom. people can hear. Good morning, mommy. It's been up to noon. Yes, Mark. I love when people call me Mark. <laughs> just take away all the complications. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel very happy. I'm glad to to have spent the past days with you and um, what I've learned so far, it's so amazing. I, I think I've learned a lot staying with you and with your boys. Oh, so, really? Yes, I'm going back a lot and I hope to come back someday. Oh, we can't to wait to have you. you guys again. Yeah, the boys, the boys love having people around, you know, <laughs> um, in our small cocoon at home and everything. And I'm very happy to hear that. So um, one thing that struck me was that you have a, um, an organization. And I remember when I saw you the last time in Boya, you told me you were focused on bringing, kind of raising your organization. And I was like, oh, this is some real, um, this is some real vision. Like, wow, you want to focus on building your organization. How old is your organization? My organization has been existing for two years now. Wow. Yeah, and um, it hasn't really been easy because I've been doing everything almost by myself, like yeah. financially. Sometimes it's like that when you yes. start. Yes. <laughs> I remember when I started too. <laughs> so, but even when I had some other projects, there was a time I was supposed to have a project in Batoke, uh -huh. and some people I went to, you know, men, they only wanted me to, to have sex with them yeah. before they can give their support and finally I just had to forget about them and do at my own pace and with the little money I had and the church also supported me. Wow, so that's one of the challenges of having an organization and then almost all on your own and as a woman and uh, oh my goodness. It's really easy, especially being a woman. Yes, yes, because you meet you meet many people. Yeah. People who are even able to help you, but they want just one thing from you. So it's so because you cannot sell off your dignity. Yeah. Because you want to achieve your dream. Sometimes you just have to push hard and then you do it with your own little resources and is 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 better that way rather than selling off yourself because you want to see those dreams come true. Uh, I don't think I had a direct challenge. From a man like that, you know, but yeah, well, uh, I think they do flat, but I, I didn't put two and two together. But you are right, you know, I mean, I actually also turned down um, getting close to some people who mm -hmm. might have looked like 
they could sponsor or they could support, you know, um, if they want to just start going in that direction, meet me here yes. and all of those things, <laughs> I just stop. Mm -hmm. That is true. So um, how have you felt like in the two years or a year and a half you've been on the field? Do you look like it's worth it or let me just stop? Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm happy that I've been doing this work because when I was still a little girl, mm -hmm. Whenever somebody asks me, what do you want to be? I say, I just want to take care of people. I want to take care of children. Oh, I always had this passion in me. Uh -huh. Yes, and, but I didn't know how it was called that time. I could be maybe a humanitarian or something like that. But yeah. I just knew that taking care of um, less privilege and all that was mm -hmm. something I really wanted to do. So I'm happy that even I might be feeling that I started too late, but it's never too late though. And I'm happy that I've been able to do it, and this is the second year that I've been active into it. So, and so far, the people I've met, the children I've met, I'm happy that I'm able to impact them somehow. Though you, we cannot keep going back to one and the same places, but I'm sure that sometime I'll pass again to some of those places I've been to, to see them again and share with them one or two things. And... Uh... Have you been able to, you know, work on your visibility, like, you know, virtually, online? There's a lot that goes on online nowadays. And COVID has just made it like, if you're not online, then where yeah. else are you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, really, I've realized that I've, I've, been, I've become more active on mm -hmm. um, social media. Mm -hmm. Yes, because of what I do. I had my Facebook account a long time ago, but I hardly post and all these things. But recently, it's very important because that is the first place where you can be visible. Yeah, and then when you want to work with people, like, you know, people out there, not necessarily people in your mm -hmm. small circle there, yes. you need to put yourself out there so that they can, you know, note. Yes. So do you have something like a website? Not yet. No, not yet. But I have a Facebook page. Is it active? Foundation, which is yes, it's active. Uh huh. It's active, and um, um, on different platforms like LinkedIn, um, WordPress. Oh wow! Where my I, fellow WordPress sister. <laughs> where I I share my my little work. Um, yeah. So I've had some people calling here and there. Like a friend called me recently that she wants to donate to uh -huh. the children. So I'm very happy. Gradually, people are beginning to see what I've been doing and mm -hmm. they want to get involved. They want to really support me in, in helping these children. It's all about them anyways. And have you been able to register your organization? That's something some people say is challenging. And maybe I was so lucky. No, Give that I'm a lawyer. I don't know. <laughs> no, I haven't, but I'm already working on that. Okay. I already have somebody who I've been calling and calling that he wants us to share a space together. Wow. Yes. So, <laughs> so it's do you really think that it's easy in this in, in let's say in the southwest as compared to in the little rural? I don't know. Yes. I mean, you've been here for for some short time. You may you might you might have also seen some people this way who have organizations. Do you think they have it easy? Do you think it's I don't know. No, I I don't think it's easy for anybody at all. But you just have to to know where you're going to and uh -huh. then you have to push it because there's no way it's never too easy for anybody it's just about you pushing it pushing it pushing it and connecting with the right people uh -huh. and, and selling out your your vision to to them so that you guys can all come together and mm -hmm. and, and do something big yeah uh so you have to work hard you have to uh, yes. think about your connections yes you work hard, you think about your connections, uh, you you focus on your visibility too, mm -hmm. because that's also how you can be accountable, right? Yes. People will know that you're actually doing what you said you're going to be doing. So yes. if you're raising funds, they're seeing that you're you are using mean? those funds to do what you you're said you were raising the funds to do. Yes. Okay. That's reliability. Yes, you have to show that you're reliable before they can trust you and support you financially, materially, and whatever support they need. And what about team building? Have you had any challenge with that? I know you said so far you're alone, but have you even tried to have people even manifested interest come and then gone or yeah. what? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I've had people working some few, on some few projects and even... Um, 
friends yeah yes um recently they've been writing uh -huh. there's somebody who wrote me from bamenda that i want to follow them but it's in bamenda uh -huh. so i was still looking at the, the possibility of him doing something there and under the they save my foundation and some other my younger sister's friends have been calling they want to join the team but they are they also have their own schedules so i'm not really we have not really built a team but we're looking forward to that and I think that sometimes you also need to know what you want them to do. Because if people just want to come and go to the field, there's time when the work is not on the field at all. Mm -hmm. You have to build it up. You have to write. You know, for example, if you want to put yourself out there, the Facebook page has to be updated. Yes. Uh, yes. People who have to do write-ups, sometimes you just have to keep doing write-ups and putting it out there or sending those emails, learning how to do all of that. And frankly speaking, for me, that was a challenge. And it's still like, well... I just have to do all of that alone. I do my social media really like alone, you know. I mean, when I had a project, my son, I had some people, him in particular, but I still did a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember even trying to get the team to do live videos too sometimes or just do some short videos so we can put on the YouTube channel. It wasn't easy. And I'm like, but how are we going to grow? And I'm like, after everything, maybe they think it's, it's your, your thing. thing. Yeah. So, oh, you had that experience yes, too. Yes, yes. They always think that it's your thing, so they're not. And they're I used to tell them, time. look, it's your life. You're, it's, you're, you're, you're actually making, you're learning from this experience mm -hmm. to use that knowledge tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So don't be thinking that it's my thing. Yes. Because and you would go, yes. I started volunteering with um, Nuena Lyunga Foundation. Uh -huh. That was when things oh, were, you did. Yes, yes, things were really, really bad, bad for me. It. Things were yeah. really bad for me that time, but I took the challenge. I had nothing. She wasn't paying me yeah. nothing. I mean, I was sacrificing my time, money, and every other thing. Thank God I had a friend who had a space in there, and then she said, come and stay with me because I lost my home where I was living. That's a whole lot of story. I don't even want to uh -huh. talk about it now. So I had to move in my friend, took my baby to my mom, came back to Boya, I started living with my friend and volunteering. Truly, that girl supported me with housing and feeding and every other thing because I was volunteering. No payment, nothing. Then you learn from that I experience. Learned a lot. And sometimes when we want to complain, you just say, it's your thing. You're learning it for yourself and uh -huh. not for me. So sometimes we feel bad, like maybe she doesn't want, but at the end of the day, uh, yeah, I am. Uh, and, and okay, I'm now you have come and seen me, yes. Dwala, mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I have an office, I have all of this, but this is not how I started. Mm -hmm. My son would tell you, he, I, I walked in that my room that you saw for months and all alone, you know. And um, there were times when I remember once I asked somebody to send me a thousand francs. That is how uh, sometimes when you want to kind of focus on this thing mm -hmm. all other things you, you don't have that kind that, of interest mm -hmm. for them too and people could not understand my mom could not understand people were like what are you putting all your time into mm -hmm. like that <laughs> because you also have to watch a lot of things yes. you have to read and people will not know what you are doing at that time yes that's that's another challenge I had with my family. You know, when you've gone to school and then they expect you to have a job, a mm -hmm. paid job for that matter, and then mm -hmm. you're providing for maybe your younger ones and all that, but uh -huh. when I'm not giving that support, it's a uh -huh. problem. And they begin to think that maybe it was a waste of time sending me to school. Yeah, mm -hmm. so many people have been saying that, my family, this, that, that. I've been saying one or two things that really got me discouraged, but thank God I, I didn't get discouraged uh -huh. because I kept pushing and pushing. And now, my father is why asking me how this your foundation thing has oh my going? goodness is it my <laughs> father i don't have any project recently but <laughs> i have to, to do something soon <laughs> so that's it that's it it's at fun. least the, the 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 thing for me is that i have other things that i am doing too so uh i can spread out some too but i really love the organization at times when i'm like i want to give up but very easy. Have you ever felt it's like easy? Yes. Oh, many times, many times I felt like can I just maybe I should just hold on this thing and then focus on something else. But it about it's not really about the money all the time. You see, I had one friend who always say, Hey, when well, this is your volunteerism thing, when will you start earning your own money? When will you start doing things and having your own money? And eh, people are using you, people are doing this, and eh, you take your money, you go and sacrifice, and the next day maybe you're asking me for money and things like that. So, oh, okay. For how long did you volunteer? 
I volunteered with Nuela for one year, for one whole year. Wow. Yes. Hey, yes. my yes. grandson, yes. she yes. said kudos. <laughs> you are going to be my next <laughs> guest to <laughs> grandson. She has her own uh, called the Network for Solidarity of and Empowerment. You were yes. telling me you wanted to, to volunteer. Yeah, volunteer. I need yes. to add you. We need to. Because working together like this, for me, is the best way. Yes. You know, you, you learn and share and you grow together. So we have to do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe you volunteer, boy, and also come to Douala because I, I'm not having many people in Douala. I'm ready already. anytime. anytime. I'm so happy. We will really work towards that. Okay, let's come now to domestic violence. You know, this is domestic violence awareness month. Yes. I mean, what do you think is going on? What What is domestic violence to you? You told me you are a single parent, right? Yes. I'm okay, maybe you had some small experience with. Uh, domestic violence is not only the physical, the beating. It could be just feeling Mental. like. Yeah, feeling like this thing is not working and uh, let me take myself out of this situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you have any experience like that or, you yes. know, maybe with the people you work with? Mm -hmm. I had that experience not really with the people I worked with, but with relationship. Mm -hmm. Like my um, baby's father. Mm -hmm. Yes, we were together for like eight years. Wow, and eight? During those eight years, yeah. I saw a lot of signs that wasn't going to work, but I kept pushing and struggling to make things work. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that was where I really failed big time because from his family, let me say for him, he really didn't have any problem. There was, there was pressure from his mom, his family. There were times that um, the mom would insult me and, and she really said over her dead body, this thing is not oh, going wow. to work and all. But there was, and there was a period when he saw that no, moving into their house was the best way to get me together with his mom. Uh -huh. But when I got there, it was worse. She insulted me. Yes, there was food. She gave me food, but she's that kind of person. When she gives you food, the next minute she's insulting me behind the scenes. And then she even call me a girl from the Carrefour. No, if my son cannot get married to a girl from the Carrefour, then at one point I look at my I said, but I have my degree, and then what am I really doing here? What I was stressed up. People who knew me, they saw that I was really in stress. And well, my family just let me be because first of all, I moved in there without their knowledge, and they were just like, eh, anyhow, we want to do it. It's your concern, but the day you die there, we'll just come and take you and bury. So I lived with them for six months. There was a lot of disrespect for his younger ones, and. The mom was not making it easy. We lived together for how long? For six months. Okay, but you guys house. were together for like eight years. Yes, we were together for like eight years. We started in when I just got to university. Okay, but he wasn't physically violent, but he did violent. He yes, he was. He was. Oh really? Okay, so you really have an experience. Yes, physical, okay. emotional, and all that. Yes. Oh okay, so you 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 know firsthand. <laughs> in addition to maybe working with other people who have been um, because for that, what what is your purpose really with your organization? My focus first is with um, children. Yeah. Um, that's um, children who go through torment and all that. Maybe from stepmothers, relatives, and torture. Even from their own parents. Any child that is suffering from torture because that's what I went through. Yeah. I, I was born out of red wedlock, so I grew up with my stepmom, and I grew up in fear because she was yeah. that kind of person. I always beating and beating and beating and. Whenever something I was going through something, I hardly say it. So uh -huh. all every stress I went through, and even had some sexual harassment when I was a child, like three times from three different men, but I could not say it because so, I was afraid. So children, we need to work. We need to focus on our children. We need to give them the best we can give, yes. right? Yes. So that they don't grow up tomorrow and be these abusers or these victims mm -hmm. and perpetrators and all what and we are seeing in society yes. today. Because it's from that stage that they, they develop those things and by the time they get to their youthful age and they are manifesting it and they will think that maybe it's spiritual but it's from that stage when they were still very small that we neglected. I saw how you were interacting with those children at the... <laughs> That event, when was that? On the 10th of October, when you came? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. So do you have those kind of events too with children? Yes, I've been to um, God First um, God First Orphanage in Batoke, uh -huh. um, St. Grace and Bunduma in Boya. Where is that? Uh, and Bunduma. It's and Bunduma, Bunduma Gate. Okay. Yes. Right inside. Yeah. The, the boat is just by the road, but the place is right inside. Wow. I went there with my team, um, the UNESCO Peace Ambassadors. We had a program last year on uh -huh. World Peace Day. Uh -huh. So we visited them and had a small activity with them. Uh -huh. And then um, I've been to St. Glory's Orphanage with um, CCF. There's one organization where in Goya, CCF. Still where is in Goya, Glory? At the okay. Malingo. 
Malingo. Wow. So we went there on World Volunteerism Day to clean the environment and then we, we taught them how to prepare fried rice and things that I've shared, small, this small thing we have. And what's your greatest joy working with those children? Oh, whenever I, I visit them, I feel, I feel fine. I feel better. I feel like I'm already doing what I you, love you, you doing. You see yourself again. And yes. You see how you're showing yourself that love. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, all yes. of that. Like I'm giving them hope. That's something I never had, but they are having it, so I'm, I'm happy. So what do you think about um, talking domestic violence to children? Should we just talk to them or even the way we relate with them, show them by our actions? Yes, yes. You cannot just tell them, but you have to also do the action because I believe they copy more of the action than, than even what you tell them. Yes, because if they see you, you tell a child, don't fight, but they see you fighting, uh, they'll just copy, say, ah, uh, this, I'm copying this and see that's all. But they will not, to, they will not be able to retain what you tell them, but from your action, that's what they will copy. Like they say, children always copy the bad things. Yes, it's easy for them to copy the bad things. So, so these people who grow up and abuse their partners, be it man or woman, and go as far as killing, you know, like the young girl who was mother in the u.s i think on the 18 mm -hmm. shot in front of her own ten three times. children <laughs> ten times i'm like who brought up that guy mm -hmm. i know that you cannot people say you give birth to a child you don't give birth to their heart but at least you can influence that they, they, they don't grow up they, they're they not don't, born yes, knowing yes, anything yes. right mm -hmm. they're, they're born like that and we also teach them we encourage them to walk teach them to, you know, say please and thank you and stuff like that. Yeah, so I think we have a too. lot to do, yes, right? Yes, the environment where they grow up, maybe the, the kind of friends they make, maybe uh -huh. in school or in the quarters. Uh -huh. I, because it's not just about what they copy from home, even uh -huh. the way they relate with friends out there. Maybe they go to their friend's houses and see the way their parents behave and they choose to copy it. Oh, okay. So the environment, not in terms necessarily of the quarter, but yes. of what they are exposed to. to yes. Because I know people who have come from Mutengene who are models, women, sisters and stuff and other yes. people have come from Mutengene and they are yes. so I'm like, no, it's not about Mutengene it's about the individual the individual and the mm -hmm. exposure the, the family, the all of yes. that so it's very important now yes. Let's, yes. yes, my younger brother he wrote the advanced level and uh -huh. failed and during the whole of this year he was always online late now when I'm online I'm, um, I'm online working late at night I also see him one day I asked him what are you what do you really stay up <laughs> doing online he just laughed and then he said he was going to surprise I didn't know I thought I was the only one observing but I didn't know yeah. my mother's younger sister too was observing the same thing and when they spoke to him he said no I'm going to surprise you guys okay now the GC is out and he failed and COVID just came and even gave them more time to stay at home and yes. do what they want because they could not go to school yes. anymore but I realized that he he was instead making he was he did a, the kind of friends he uh -huh. was with during that time the children were not even going to school they uh -huh. don't even have anything doing them i told them they have, I how was going to go and subscribe and one of them was a neighbor's child uh -huh. but they think that maybe it's, i don't like that no uh -huh. i said he said the fact that it's a neighbor's child does not necessarily mean it's supposed to be your friend you're supposed to make friends with people who you learn something from and you can always share yeah. and something positive too not just uh, working out late night and your online late night what do you really stay up doing late at night well i think he's going to learn now Sometimes so. experience is the harshest teacher. Mm -hmm. And now, talking about rape, we still cling on children. You know, like, what do you think about this whole thing? Because the way the thing is becoming alarming, I'm like, the other day I saw something, a three-year-old child. Like, it's funny. Another three-year-old child mm -hmm. again, two-year-old child. How can we, who are supposed to protect children, be the ones violating these children in such a way mm -hmm. what do you think i i think i don't know how i can even say it because it's it's so bizarre that because it when people start saying that um indecent dressing here and there and then we see the age group of children who have been raped so it's, it's not even on it should not even be focused on that indecent dressing anymore I don't even know if I should say it's a spiritual something because what does that child really have on, on her? What they really have on them that will attract you to to that point why of should you even why should you even look I cannot look at a child, even my son or a twenty five year old boy, and even think that I can. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't really know. I don't know how a man or 30 or 20 or whatever you can see a small child. I really want to focus on child. Yeah, some people how say, can you? Some people say it's um, spiritual. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We, because it's something we cannot really be able to, to uh, see. Or it's a perversion also. Oh, like yes. Maybe people are just, they, 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 they are just like, okay. Like, maybe it can be interesting. Maybe I can get better satisfaction if I... You know, if I violate a child, I don't know. And the worst is nobody even is even wanting to help because the family sometimes it's difficult to even help these people or difficult to really understand what's going on because the families themselves they hide it. Uh, um, there's one situation I witnessed. My my mom was one of the the person the people who even mm -hmm. discouraged me to do to follow up. There was this man in a compound where we lived. He was abusing children. Like the story I got was that he was he calls them whenever they're in his house. He calls one of them to his room and then uses his finger to to um, to insert in their vagina. And so it has been happening for a very long time. Then one time he did it now to one small girl who is two years and he has been doing that to that girl's elder sister. So the, the eldest one that caught him doing that to the sister and threatened to tell their mom that he gave now the child 20,000 francs to keep her mouth shut. Oh. So the child went to school and was spending the money anyhow. The friends saw that. Where did you get this money from? They went out to the house and reported to her mom that our friend has been spending money in school these days and we don't know where she took the money from. So they threatened her and the mother used an iron, hot iron, threatened her and then she said it was that man that gave her the money because she caught the man doing this, this or that too. The younger sister and that's how the thing escalated and then it happened that he has done it to almost all the other young girls in the compound oh. but then the mothers of those other girls were against it according to them they felt that maybe their children will be exposed and all that and then they ganged up now to say it was a lie that the man has never done it to their own children that it's because that woman's children they are spoiled that's why they have done it to them and all that that's how the man the woman have was discouraged because even when I explained the thing to one barrister who was interested in it, we came right to the compound to carry out information. We met the woman, wanted her to really say what happened to her children, but she said her husband has refused that he doesn't want to hear about it again. He doesn't want anybody to get involved and um, he just wants to catch the man himself and then he's going to kill the man. Then I said, but that's really going to escalate to something else because killing somebody now will even take you to prison and they'll not even hear that it's because the man did this or that to your child. So let him let them allow us to handle it and the woman said no she cannot do what her husband has really refused her from doing so it's so difficult sometimes to even intervene in this situation because the parents themselves they are not willing to collaborate with us who want to intervene and see how we can give her but they don't know the after effect of these things to those children because when they grow up and then they start having some funny 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 kind of feeling and all that you know, I'm listening to you with so much attention because I, I mean, you are, you are also on the field in the other side, if I can mm -hmm. say so. And I also have a case right now, I'm trying to solve that case. And I'm like, is it even going to be easy? Like, mm -hmm. uh, is somebody who has taken in some children, you know, some IDP children to, to kind of help them. Mm -hmm. And then he's abusing these children. Mm -hmm. But how do I go about this? Because I hear that, um, uh, First of all, the family, the, the people who kind of talk to me say, please don't say, let nobody know that, you know, we are involved. Yes. So it's like they don't want to talk. And so even they say, follow up, who are you going to talk to? Yes. Secondly, um, one of the girls said, she actually told her mom, and her mom said, hey, I bet don't talk. He's the one sending you to school. Mm -hmm. So it's like, See? is the mom is the mom selling the child? Yes. Is the mom kind of like giving the child away? They don't care anymore. Money is now very important. There was one other case that um, happened in Goya, this driver that raped a little bit. Wait, before you even talk, God, so if you say we report them, we report them to who? Given that even the police don't, they don't care. care. So if we report to the police, the police will not do nothing. Yes. I think we just have to continue talking and blasting and blasting. And one day, but for now, reporting after all, when people go to the police, these are the same police that will tell you to sort that thing out. Yes, yeah, it it's a family thing. Some of them just say it's a family thing. Go home and talk about it. Or they even say you guys should negotiate. Maybe your family, the family, the family of the perpetrator should give money to the victim's family, and that's it. That's all. They go home and life continues. 
but then it's a victim that is in pain and all that even in the nearest future we don't know what will happen so what was this other case you wanted to talk about okay it's the, this, this driver he has actually attempted something like that on me like two years ago to but you. yes but he, he made away with my phone and other stuff uh -huh. yes yeah, so it was it just this um, this year march that uh -huh. i saw on one group that this driver has done this to this child and when i opened the oh, picture it was the same that guy. driver in Boya, yes. that taxi driver yeah, that taxi driver wow so i just said oh thank god oh thank god it was it, it, now he has been caught with another wait wait person. he used to carry people in his taxi yes and he carries people in his taxi and he, he because what happened with me that day was that i was in a taxi i entered a taxi from bundu and um how they call bokwango uh -huh. so i uh, coming down just before the um, the um ark of god there was there's one entrance there, there yeah i know that ark of god that man's church yes uh -huh. there was one on computer building there and then uh -huh. a small road that leads to that building uh -huh. he just entered i was the only one with him i was seated in front uh -huh. he just entered that entrance before i could realize that because uh -huh. i was manipulating my phone there uh -huh. he was just talking we we're just talking and he was saying hey wh why are you coming from you're looking very shabby like this and we we're just talking i said well now because money you know they were just discussing something like uh -huh. ah, before i could know he, he just entered that room. wow then he threatened me threatened 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 that he's going Wait, to what? rape me if i try to shout but actually i did not really see because he was just threatening and then struggling to remove something from where he was sitting like he says uh -huh. i'm going to harm you if you do this if you do that finally we talked he said no he has always vowed to himself that any girl that uh, um he meets and he's going to to do one or two things again because of the experience he had has he had with um, other women in the past. So he wants to be revengeful on other girls. Tell him that, but this is not going to help you. And then he even told me that I will never be able to catch him. That he's so smart and sweet. So I was surprised I was finally caught. <laughs> but he made away with my phone and my ID card. I had to do another ID. How did he take them? He took your bag. Okay. Yes, my okay. bag was. I left it uh, like inside the car. So yeah. I begged him that okay, I want to ease myself. After begging and crying for, oh, my friends have been calling. He took my phone and switched it off and all that. My friends have been calling. Yeah. I can't even talk to anybody. So he did that. Okay, I begged him that okay, I want to ease myself. Yeah. So when I stepped out of the car, he just entered his car. He entered his car and took off. He went off. He went, went away. Went away. He realized that it is going to be difficult. <laughs> oh my away. goodness! What? So, I mean, I would never have known. After, before doing that, before uh -huh. stepping out, he because when um when he entered that entrance and I struggled uh -huh. to open the door, he hit me on my face. So my face was really swollen. Uh -huh. So even even as he ran away, he ran off, and then I tried to follow the car uh -huh. and fell. So I had bruises on my legs. Uh -huh. and that. So those are the injuries I sustained the cause of all that incident and this little girl too that he did the same to he like he used he beat the girl on the face ah yeah yeah I remember i saw it on facebook mm -hmm. i couldn't imagine yes. that you have a personal experience so, with that guy with that same person sweet mm -hmm. karma is a bitch yes yeah, so but then after i, I tried to follow up personally even uh -huh. the the president of driver's union he uh -huh. was he, he was interested in the case because it's my my friend too mm -hmm. So he told me to find out about the girl's family and see how we can help them. But after every investigation, we were told that the family, the family of the guy, um, said we we're going to pay them one hundred and fifty thousand. Oh so no! About the case. So when the mother of the girl refused, they said, "Now, nah, if if you care, you refuse. We'll go to the police and give the money there, and her son will be released." And that was it. Oh no! So I don't even know. And then I tried to reach the family. Now they told me that the girl and the mother that gone back to what I say, Kona. Yeah, well, they, they just leave and go. And the girl from. lives with that trauma. Oh, oh my all. goodness! So, so these are the kind of things we have to just keep talking about and i'm just so grateful that you talk you about your own experience mm -hmm. without any when that's me you know i i talk yes. about my personal experience because that's the you know sometimes when people hear those experiences those who are going to bash are going to bash but we don't care about those people mm -hmm. because they want to silence you so they can continue doing what they are they do. doing yes. you know and we have to be the hope we have to keep talking and talking yes. if we have personal experiences we use them if we don't have them we talk about the ones we know oh, yes. so people know that we are talking about real things mm -hmm. not just things that happen in america yes. or wherever mm -hmm. oh my goodness so and, yeah i remember that when why when i put up um, this 
in this same this particular incident uh -huh. about that driver on Facebook. Uh -huh. So there was somebody that wrote to me privately and said he needs to know where the girl lives and everything about the girl. But I became suspicious of that person because I went and checked his um, profile uh -huh. and everything. I saw that he was friends with that guy on Facebook. Oh. So I just thought like maybe the, I just said no. I decided not to ever answer him again. Well, was the one that to go and silence her or whatever. Okay. This is so pathetic. Mm -hmm. So what is the last thing you can say? I mean, with all what's going on, I don't know. Some people say I blame parents. Somebody said, but I'm, I'm like in the end, I will take it back to parents. What can what else can we do? Okay, as parents, as parents, it's not easy. It's not because we cannot watch our kids twenty four seven. Yes, it's impossible because sometimes it's, they step out of the house to go play with their friends, mm -hmm. and sometimes they go up, go to far off places where you don't even know. But you're in the house and thinking that the child is just outside. But two, so three years to, old, can they, should they be going to far off places? No, uh, like maybe uh, even parents, four, five, six, seven. We might not be home. Some of us yeah. who are busy. We might uh -huh. just leave them in the house and then. Nobody to care for them, and then somebody just enters the house and take advantage of them. Especially when they know that their mother is always out working. Uh, maybe they know your time, everything, your schedule, your work schedule. They just take advantage of the time. They know you're not there to sneak in the house and take advantage of the children. Uh, about those who maybe they get raped when they're coming back from school and all that. Maybe parents should also now sacrifice some time to take their children to school and then go back to bring them back home after school and all that. But for how long are we going to do that? For how long? Like it's like God is the only one really protecting some of us whose children are still fine and all that because it's not it's not really. At, at my child goes to a school that is just within the quarter but i'm not still happy because of what is happening i just feel like what if she leaves school one day and somebody just and i always tell her don't receive bonbon if i don't even greet anybody as you're going to school and you're coming but don't greet anybody even if it's a person sometimes even at home now you should not even yes. talk to your uncle again i don't greet anybody oh my goodness and even so in the scary. compound where we stay i tell her I, I, i've shown her the houses the rooms that she's not supposed to enter so you see this uncle don't enter even if he calls you to send you don't and if tell him that your mother has said she doesn't okay what do you think if we house. also start talking to People who can be, who might even have these urges to come in. Because we are only talking about what we are saying. Okay, let's talk to our children how to say no, how to be, how to not go out and all of those things. Okay, what do we say to the people who do this kind of things or who might even want to do this kind of things? For me, it's like rape is wrong. Is do wrong. not rape. The, because if people don't even think about doing it then the children will be safe and yes. we will not be worried about our but children how do we even know somebody's mind in the first place to even know that that's what they have on their mind to do it's difficult it's so difficult it's so difficult to go about this thing i mean to have results 100 percent on the, on the safety of children well, how, how we so we'll just continue talking, talking. we'll just continue raising awareness yes would just and maybe propose on what punishment to be given to such people because it's like nobody cares they don't care they do it and they get away with it and oh it gives them more power and strength to keep doing it and they'll keep doing it and we are going to wrap up on this uh this campaign because for me it's a very straight campaign it starts with me mm -hmm. you know uh, uh if everybody became conscious and took on that responsibility that it starts with them to 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 kind of do whatever they have to do. It starts with you, the mother starts with you, the teacher starts with you, the uncle starts with you, the everybody. It's like if we talk about rape to the point where even you, that uncle in the house or anybody, you already know that hey, the way they talk about that rape, it is if I try and finish. Yes. But if we don't talk about it and we are making like, oh, it's a taboo, you know, you you, you they don't talk about it in church, they don't talk about it in country yeah. meeting, they don't talk about it where it's like, no, it is not a taboo. It should not be a taboo. So I'm very happy, mommy. I just hope that more events that you are going to have you find a way to introduce this conversation there too and, and we'll really see how we are going to do it in in boy i'm happy you're coming on board mm -hmm. because uh i don't 
think that only going to school should be enough. We need to go into the communities too. Yes, because when you talk only to the children, maybe they are from homes where nobody cares, so nobody thinks there is something to talk about. Mm -hmm. So they will know and then they will not go and talk about that. But we talk to the children in school, we talk to the parents at home, mm -hmm. yes. we talk to the people in the village meeting, we talk to people. Uh, one day, I hope even in church, we can start going there to talk. To, to. talk. If only they will give us. Yeah, that time is the thing. To if only they will allow us to go in there and talk. Because I heard some, 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 you know, some priests say no, no, no. But I'm like, I, I went. I want. Why I don't want to go there anymore? I went to one. I wrote, and they said they will get back to me, and they never got <laughs> back to me. And I know that they do get back to people, mm -hmm. you know, to say it's okay. Or they even say the very day you come there and talk, they say, oh, hey, you have ten minutes. Mm -hmm. But me, they said no. They will get back to me, and they never <laughs> got back to me. So I'm like, <laughs> because yeah, they know you, they don't want they don't you want to you talk to about that kind of thing, you know. I'm like, <laughs> well, one day, one day. Yeah, what kind of punishment can we really give the people? The law. This is my penal code. I'm embarrassed because I'm a lawyer, and I'm like whatever you know but uh, i think what happens what will happen is the more activism we have the more people come together the more activities we do the more we put our faces up there the more petitions we do i, mean, I remember once uh, my grand started one when this little child was uh, raped and murdered two years ago mm -hmm. unfortunate but we didn't get so many signatures. No, people, it's easy to come on Facebook and say, oh, blah, blah, blah. But when we say, okay, come down, let's do a walk. Yes. Come down. Those are the things that would, would, would make the policy makers, but we are not the ones to change those laws. Mm -hmm. It's the policy makers, right? Mm -hmm. And before I write to them, or organizations write to them and say, they need to see that the population is as mad yes. as behind these yes. organizations. Um, and yes. then they are also going to drop the bill and they're going to put their weight on that bill. Mm -hmm. But if there's no support, like if, for example, at home, uh, I want to do something and nobody there is in support of what I want to do, will I not leave it? Yeah, yeah, so I have to first of all get them to buy that idea mm -hmm. and then I can now write, for example, if, if there's, if I had a husband, for example, I can say, okay, this is what the children are thinking and I think that then he can now willingly do it, even if he did not really want to do it. Mm -hmm. But if the children don't care, I myself don't care, why should I expect him to care, right? So I think that especially with something like rape, you know, maybe some of those people did themselves rape too. So they need to get a lot of pressure mm -hmm. from the grassroots. Yes. And that is what we have to do, what we want to do. Okay. Oh, I was even thinking yeah. if you can organize um, a, a walk. Yeah. A walk like, but I talked with um, this one, this girl, Temeng Eli, who is also working on this rape issue in the southwest. Uh -huh. And then she said she tried that once and they, they, she, maybe she went for authorization and they refused. Mm -hmm. That they don't want any demonstration any walking and all that on the streets and all that i think that that was going to be something big too and involving the children as well putting them and mm -hmm. from la, la, and last, match la, together last year we did uh, in Dwala we had 100 people in here one day we had maybe 25 people i think people uh, some say oh you put did not market you do not talk about it a lot and stuff and everything but I mean, social media, how many millions of people are there? Mm -hmm. if, if we put the case up, you see the They'll people who come on. Yes. But now, come down, let's walk now. So let's see to. how it happens this year. Mm -hmm. I think progressively each year, the campaign picks up. I really want to throw my weight behind this campaign because it's a specific campaign, you know. And for me, it's not about me. It's not about H4AB. Mm -hmm. It's about the cause. It's about the, the children, innocent children who are being violated. It's about sending a message to these perpetrators and people would think about these kind of things that, oh no, we are seeing you, we are serious about this thing. It's not about one organization, it's about many Everybody. of us coming together yes. and doing this. I really want to thank you, dear. I want to thank you for, for, for I mean, honoring me with this, uh, uh, I wish my home were a five-star hotel, so you <laughs> have the best of experience. But one thing I learned for me, I'll be very honest, and I'll say it live, is that um, it is not the comfort, it is not that space it is the warmth it is the 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 and that is why sometimes i also go to some place mm -hmm. over and over yeah. because i love the warmth it's not about the the comfort and the all of that sometimes i like my quiet too mm -hmm. but at times when i want to be in a family and a family which kind of welcomes mm -hmm. you and where you, you you know you share and there's all of that love and all of that so yes my home is open Harriet. i'm so grateful and my organization is here i mean i'm going to make you i'm going to make more foundation a partner we will have to work together i mean it's like 
I'm a different generation, you're a younger generation, but yeah. we have the same vision mm -hmm. and then we can relate to different people and we are all passionate about children. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you dear viewers. <laughs> this is my first guest and I really look forward to doing more of such segments and um, I'm hoping um, the Network for Solidarity, Hope and Empowerment uh, we can get to do one maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So we talk some more about this campaign. It starts with me and uh, I get more people in Douala to join me, join us, you know, um, carry this campaign out much more effectively this year. Last year, we just went to one school to launch it. But this year, we are hoping to go to many schools and go into the communities to organize some events. I'm already thinking about organizing one in my own neighborhood, you know, it starts with me campaign, yes. getting the word out. Sometimes people just don't even know mm -hmm. and they don't also know where to go to if at all. So that's why they go to the police and the police can easily just tell them go home mm -hmm. and settle. Mm -hmm. They don't know that they can come to organizations like our own and we can pick this up for them. Yes. And uh, sometimes we can also help them financially so that they are not tempted to take that money because they don't have money mm -hmm. to go to the hospital yes. and all of those kind of things. Thank you so much those who viewed. Thank you so much those who are going to view. Um, I put the link to her Facebook page there and our website and our Facebook page. Please join us if you, you can volunteer for this campaign. It starts with me. It's not about H4AB. It's about the campaign. It starts with me. So, uh, yes, join us. And if you want to be my guest, it mustn't be, we cannot, we don't have to be sitting together. I think StreamYard or Facebook Live will work uh, better next time, wherever you are. I am yours, Maria Banga, founder of the association Hope for the Abuse and the Battle. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless us all. Bye bye, Harriet. Bye bye.